All right, good morning, guys. I'm out on the Tillamook Bay jetty today trying something very different, going after my first monkey-faced eel using a technique called poke poling. So basically, I have a broken off rod here. It's about four foot long, and I've got a chunk of uh, squid here on the end of a 40-pound piece of monofilament and a size two bait hook. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna poke this down into holes in the jetty here. It's low tide. Uh, I've read that's the best time to go poke polling and uh, try and catch some of these eels. So it's going to shove this down in holes in the jetty and hope something bites. I have no idea if this is going to work, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, lots of crabs out here. If anybody knows, jetties are slippery places. Okay, that one looks like a pretty good spot. Probably going to get my feet a little bit wet today, but that's okay. Let's see here. Underneath that rock looks good. Let's try. All right. Let it get down in there. Dang it. It's getting bit right there. Not sure what it is though. Oh, it stripped me. All right. Let's get some more bait. Getting bit down here. That bit twice underneath this big rock right here right here in front of me. Let's try this again. Oh, got him. I got him. <laughs> there we go. My first monkey face deal. Check that out. That didn't take too long. Cool. Wow, what a weird looking fish. Look at the face on that thing. That didn't take very long. I only had like 10 minutes of fishing. I got one. They look like an eel, but they're actually not a true eel. They're uh, actually a prickleback. And they live in these jetties underneath the rocks. So they're not really caught by boat anglers all that often. Um, but a very bizarre looking fish. Alright, so there it is. This is a small one. They can actually get quite a bit larger than this. They can get upwards of several pounds. They can live up to 20 years, so they can be a very long-lived fish. Really strange looking face. You can see where they get that monkey face name and very eel-like. Let's see if we can get uh, one or two more. I'm going to get enough to make some uh, fish tacos tonight and see how they taste. Okay, so all I have here is just a broken off four-foot rod here. The tip got broken off in shipping, and I folded forward the eyes so that if I jam it way down in there, I can pull it back out easier. And then 40 pound mono I tied onto the last guide and then I just taped 40 pound mono on there just, just so I could poke it a little bit better. And then a size 2 watt cheap eagle claw bay holder hook here. Nothing fancy. And uh, that's it. All you need is like 6, 8 inches here. Uh, I've seen guys use steel leader too, that works. It's a little bit easier to poke down the holes, but you just let the current suck this down in there. So we just look for little holes where there's potentially going to be uh, fish. They'll slide up underneath those rocks and stuff. It's not overly complicated. Just basically shoving uh, your gear down in a hole. And just let it sit there for a little bit. You'll feel them bite, but you have to let them chew on a little bit. Don't be afraid to move it a few inches over. It can make a difference if it gets sucked into a little hole when they're hiding. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's see if we can get him. Got him. Oh, it's a greenling. <laughs> Kelp greenling. You never know what you're going to get poke pulling. <laughs> That's a female kelp greenling. That's what was chewing on my uh, squid down there. Pretty. See if I can get down in there. Very deep hole. Nothing there. Oop. There's another one. That's a little cabazon. Check that out. That's a baby cabbie. The jetty's like a little nursery for all these little guys. Come on. Open your mouth, Mr. Cabby. There you go. Little baby cabazon. Cute. It's deep.
Ooh. That's a big one. Okay, there is one hiding down here underneath this rock. Let's see if I can get him. Seems like it's easier to catch when it's low. But I haven't been able to get down there to him because the water's coming in. It's pushing in the high tide. There he is, got him. <laughs> Finally. That is no yep, monkey face deal. Perfect. That's my second one of the day. Alright, got my second one of the day there. About the same size as the first one I got this morning. Not a giant, but take it. It'll be nice long fillets on them. Try again. Oop, there's a fish come up for it. Look at that. Oop. <laughs> That was a cabazon. See him right there? I wonder if he'll eat it even up here. He'll be like, I'm hungry. That's funny. I saw him pop up underneath that rock when I was pulling that up. Get him back in his hole. There you go, buddy. Go back to your hole. See ya. A lot of juvenile cabbies up here underneath the uh, these rocks and stuff. Alright guys, that's going to do it for me. I ended up getting two monkey face deals, two cabazon, and one kelp greenling. It was kind of fun. It's very physically intensive fishery. Um, I think if I was more dedicated to it and doing it more often, I'd probably use a little bit longer pull and then have something with a more dedicated tip I could tie into. I would think even like a uh, stainless steel uh, wire leaders would actually work better because you can really push it back down into that strike zone underneath those rocks. It's still fun to add a new species and try a new type of fishing here on the Pacific Northwest Coast. If you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.